Our introduction students are working on Aperture this week, and that brought to mind something that you can do that's really fast, really easy, really fun with shallow depth of field photographs that you have. Right here we have a daisy with a very, very shallow depth of field. I've opened up several textures that I really like, that I've gathered, and I'm going to show you all of them all at the same time. To do that in CS4 and CS5, this is Photoshop, what I'm going to do is from the top bar just drop down and choose for up. And then I can see all my pictures at the same time. These are textures that I found on DeviantArt.com. There's some fantastic textures out there. Incredible people letting you have work for nothing. To be able to work with this technique, what we're going to do is we're going to pull each of these textures into our original picture. Okay, so you just click and hold and drag it over. It's smaller, we'll resize it after. To do this, you have to have that Move tool active. We'll come to the next texture, click it, then drag it in. And then we'll do the last one over here. Click it and drag it in. And then we can just bring this back to one picture at a time. To resize all of these different textures, your keystroke is Control T, that's for transform. For those of you that like your menus better, it's edit and free transform right there. That puts your resize handles around. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to pull. You have to pull a lot depending on how big the difference is between the two pictures. And then you can position it where you want it. Move it around. If you want it a little bit bigger, you can do that too. And when you're done, you hit Enter to finish. To be able to see the other textures underneath, I'm just going to hide this top layer. That's this piece of paper with a rip in it. You just click that eye. Click it on, click it off. And then you come to activate the next layer down. Hit Control T. Hold your Shift key to drag. The Shift is just to keep things proportionate. Make it the size you want. Enter to finish. I'm going to move this guy up a little bit. Turn the visibility off on that layer. Activate the next layer down. Control T and drag. Now, if you only had one texture that you were going to blend, you'd only have to do this once. Enter to finish. And there we go. The next step is blending the layers into one another. It's very, very easy. All we have to do is have, again, a background picture that has a relatively shallow depth of field. Otherwise, there's just too much noise, too many things happening. Next thing that you need is a texture of some sort. Activate the texture layer, and then up on the top of the layer palette, you see where it says normal here? These are called blend modes up at the top. Drop that drop down and choose overlay. Done. If you want to try the next one, turn that one off, activate the next one, turn the visibility on, and choose overlay out of your blend modes. You want to try another one? Turn off the visibility, turn the visibility on for the next layer, activate it, and change the blend node to overlay. Now, this is the one that I wanted to really show you. I'm going to zoom in on the flower. Sometimes when you texturize, you get this, the texture falls too far on top of the image that you're working with. So there's, there's something that you can do about that. You've got to remember, all this texture is is just a picture sitting on top of another picture that's been made sort of transparent. What we're going to do I don't like the way the texture comes across the flower here. So I'm going to grab the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase from the texture layer the texture that overlaps the flower. I'm going to leave a little bit around the edges. I'm 
And you see how up here we've got still some of the texture, but over here it's just pure flour. Don't forget that you can also layer these textures one on top of the other. If I turn the visibility on of each layer, you can see how they all blend in together. Eventually you're going to lose your subject, which is the flower, but you can really play and really have an awful lot of fun with this. While we're at it, why not add some text? I'm going to come over onto my text palette, click the text tool, and I'm just going to click onto the page. I'm not going to click and drag like you would normally do. Just click. And I'm going to type in. This is where you guys find out that I can't type to save my life. I'm going to grab my move tool, move it to where I'd like it to be. If I want it bigger, I'm going to use that same control T, that same transform command. Hold the shift key and drag. Enter to finish. If I wanted a different color, I'm going to come to the layer palette. You see this T that's here? It's a little thumbnail. If I double click that, it selects all of my text. And my color patch for my text is right up at the very top. Right now it's black. I'm going to just sample from different areas. I can make it a dark color. All I'm doing is clicking onto the image itself. I'm going to try and find a color like that. And there you go. You can move that anywhere you want. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Just by using that transform key. That's all there is to it.